thing about mom. Mm -hmm. And she makes dinner for us. Plays video games with you. The best thing about mom is that she can take care of us. The best thing about my mom is that I like her when she gives me big hugs when she's happy. The best thing about my mom is that she cuddles with me. The best thing about my mom is she gives me candy. The best thing about my mom is that she snuggles with me. The best thing about my mom is that she cares about me, she loves me, and she's always there for me. The best thing about my mom is she makes the best chocolate chip cookies ever. The best thing of my mom is um, she drives me to go and play baseball with me and wrestles with me and we go on a walk together and I drive my bike and everything. The best thing about my mom is she's always great. She always makes me and Ruby breakfast, dinner, and lunch. She spreads love and is the best to everyone. The best thing about my mom is Kelly. The best thing about my mom she loves me. The best thing about mom is that she is kind. Mom's cooking. I love how she takes the time to make good, healthy meals for the whole family, even if uh, my picky taste buds don't always appreciate it. I love you, mom. You know, the best thing about my mom is that she's always there to cook and give you an encouraging word when you need one. Best thing about my mom is she's always thinking about you and you know she's praying about you when you need it. Hey guys, the best part about my mom is that she's always sacrificing herself no matter what, 100% of the time. So thank you, mom. All of you, you're the best. Happy Mother's Day. Hello and welcome to another Virtual Church Sunday with JFM. I'm Travis Osborne, the Tech and Creative Director. Thank you so much for joining us today, and we hope that this video finds you safe and well. Now before we get started into our service today, we realize that some people might be joining for the first time or have just started joining since the quarantine. If that's you, then go ahead and text WELCOME to the number found below. Maybe you're a regular here, but you still have some things that are heavy on your heart. Go ahead and text PRAY to that same number below, and our pastoral staff will reach out to you. Remember, you are not alone. So join us this morning as we virtually gather together and worship the Lord and magnify His name. Hey everyone, and welcome. If you know us, welcome back. We love spending some time with you. And if you don't know us, my name is Stephen. This is my wife, Paula, and this is Travis. And we're going to spend some time worshiping our Lord and Savior together. And we just encourage you to, again, spend a little bit of time with us. We're going to sing some songs about how God has transitioned us from death to life and ultimately provided purpose and value where there was none. He's an incredible God. And we're going to sing that out to him together right now. Free 
from sin. Jesus is my testimony. Love's in the net, it's the crown of thorns. For the cross has changed it all. never seen before for the cross has changed it all just the cross has changed it all I was lost but now I am found I was blind and now I see only this Jesus is my testimony Every curse is in the grave My whole life has been redeemed Free from sin Jesus is my testimony I will say Jesus is my testimony song ever be hallelujah hallelujah did his finish this is my victory hallelujah hallelujah he is risen let my song ever be This is my victory from beginning to the end and for all eternity I will say Jesus is my testimony I was lost now I am found I was blind now all I see only this Jesus is my testimony Every curse is in the grave My whole life has been redeemed Free from sin Jesus is my testimony I will say Jesus is my testimony I will say Jesus is my testimony Yes, yes We're going to sing a song now called Waymaker, which just speaks to who the God is that we serve. Ultimately, scripture tells us that you know, there is no one righteous, not even one, right? And righteousness, holiness is the thing that is required for eternal life. And ultimately, because there was no one righteous, the plan of salvation, God's plan of salvation through his son, Jesus Christ, was executed in history. And fundamentally, through Jesus Christ, a way was made for us to access the Father. Not because you or because I have earned it, but because of who he is. And ultimately in this challenging time, we know that we serve a God who is a fundamental way maker in providing access to God the Father. And he'll provide a way through this time.
watching every gesture of your hand And waves of fear collapse at your command And I know tomorrow when the pressure rushes in You'll be there to rescue me again What a mighty God, what a mighty God you are. What a mighty God, what a mighty God you My soul will sing the same Jesus Christ The name above all names What a mighty God What a mighty God You are What a mighty God What a mighty God You are Hey JFM, Travis Osborne here again. Just wanted to make sure that we keep you updated and informed on the different ways that you can still give during these quarantine times. So once again, there are four ways to give during this pandemic. Way number one is by mailing a check to the church. You can see our address right here on the screen. 
Way number two is via text to give. You can see the number and the instructions also on our screen. Way number three is right on our church website, which you can see here. And way number four is via the app, which you can find on any of the app stores. We thank you so much for your faithful giving during this time, and we hope that you enjoy the message. Hey everybody, thank you again for joining us for another edition of JFM at Home. We are so glad that you are joining us for worship today. And for all of you moms out there that are watching, I just want to wish you a very, very happy Mother's Day. And uh, in fact, this, this Mother's Day, if we're just honest, feels a little weird, doesn't it? You know, this is the first Mother's Day that you or I have ever uh, celebrated in the midst of a pandemic. <laughs> And so uh, it's just off. It's just different. And we get that. And, uh, but I hope that you know that you are loved. I hope you know how much we appreciate you. And I hope today you, you find joy. Joy in just being celebrated because you're worth that. In fact, today, here's what I want to do. I want to just talk to you a little bit today about what I've learned about God from my mom or from the, all the moms really in my life. And, and so I'm really excited about that. And, and I realize as I, as I even say that, that there are some, maybe, maybe you, you're watching today and, and maybe, maybe this day is a, is a little bit of a challenging day for you. You know, maybe, maybe your experience with your mom, you know, hasn't been what you wished it would be. Maybe as a mom, you have some regrets. You know, maybe you wish you could be a mom and, and you can't for whatever reason. And I just want you to know that we love you. And if what, you know, if you're hearing this and what I'm going to talk about is what I learned about God from, from a mom, if that brings a little bit of tension to you, what I want you to do is focus in on who God is and how much God cares for you and how much God loves you. And I think he has something for you this morning. And so I'm going to pray for us, okay, as we, as we dive into this. And I'm going to pray for our moms, and I'm just going to pray for our time together. Let's pray together. Jesus, thank you for being here with us. Man, thank you for your incredible love. Thank you for being in our worship. Lord, that we are just reminded of, of your goodness and your grace and your favor that is on us. Lord, for the promises that we just sang about, I just pray that those become more and more and more alive in our lives. God, I want to pray over our moms today. I want to thank you for their influence. I want to thank you for their leadership. I want to thank you for the love that they bring into our homes, the joy that they give us. I want to pray, Lord, if today is a hard day, you know, maybe we're separated from our moms today. You know, maybe we're experiencing loss today because of that. I just pray that the hope of the Lord and the joy of the Lord would renew strength and that you would be very present and very close to us as we give you our time and our focus and our energy as we look into your word. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to look today, we're going to look today at what I've learned about God from my mom. Here's the first thing. The first thing I learned about a God for my mom is this, and this is big. This is found, found, uh, foundational. It's this. God is love. God is love. Now, here's the deal. Moms, you know, the way you instinctively love is, is absolutely incredible. You know, the way that, that, that this just comes natural to you is absolutely amazing. I mean, it's work for me, right? For us guys, it's, it's work. But the things that you do to show love and to, to show care and to show kindness is just a part of who you are. And it's incredible. And, and you know the kinds of things that I'm talking about or referencing, right? Like, like when your child throws up, you catch it in your hands, right? I mean, that is incredible, you know, when something is wrong with your kids, you know it. I don't know how you know it, but you know it. You know, if, if, you're, if something's bothering your kids, you carry it, right? You carry their weights because you love them. You know, how about this? When you're, you're out and, and about and you're uh, out and around town, you're always prepared. In fact, I believe that most moms were ready for this pandemic because everything that you could ever imagine, you, you're prepared for, you carry it around in your purse, right? I mean, Clorox wipes, you already had some. Face masks, you probably had some of those too in your purse. You know, most moms that I know have a year's supply of hand sanitizer with them at 
all times, but you're prepared because you love, because you love. How about at night? You know, if you have little kids or, or remember, remember when your kids were little, or maybe remember when you were a little kid, that might be challenging for some of you, but, but you remember at night, you know, when, when your mom or you as a mom would read books to your kids. You know, my son Jaden had this, this book that he wanted read every single night for about six months. It was called Giraffes Can't Dance. And the way that I would watch Amy as a mom just sit there and go through every word and every page over and over and over again, it's just the way she showed love, right? It's incredible. Moms, you use saliva to wash your kids' face. I mean, it doesn't get any grosser than that, but for whatever reasons, your kids let you do it. It's because you love them and they love you and they know that, right? The truth is, moms, you are great at showing love. And it's that display of love that helps me understand God's love a little bit better. A love that's compassionate and kind and consistent a love that's not failing, a love that is gracious, a love that is sacrificial and selfless, it all points to God. It does. You know, in fact, there's a chapter in the Bible in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 where the Apostle Paul paints a really beautiful picture of what it means to love of what it means to love. He's, he, what he's really doing is he's describing God. He's giving us a snapshot into the heart of God. I mean, we, we may see a lot of these qualities that I'm going to read here uh, for a second in our moms or wish we seen these qualities in our moms, but it's important to understand where these qualities come from. They come from God. This is what Paul says. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy it does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no records of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. Love protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Here's a simple truth, but it's foundational to our faith journey. You are loved by God. Do you get that? God loves you. Well, what does that mean to you? What does that mean to you? I mean, the Apostle Paul says it this way. I mean, it was, it was the love of God that, that motivated the Apostle Paul. It was the love of God that, that pushed the Apostle Paul at times. It was the love of God that, that, that really grounded the Apostle Paul. And listen to what he says in Romans chapter 8. He says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? I mean, these are all the things that if you read through Paul's life journey and his ministry journey, these are things he faced. But listen to what he says, what carried him through these challenges. He says, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We are conquerors because of the love of God. That's powerful. And he goes on to say this, for I'm convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Man, a love that is found in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Just as God gave us our moms, he also gave us Jesus. Isn't that awesome? He also gave us Jesus. You know, our moms, think about this. Our moms have the power to point us in the direction of love. As a mom, you have the power to point your kids and your family in the direction of love and, and help, help your kids and, and, and help your family see their need for love. But Jesus, as the source of love, that's what I want you to get, as a source of love, points us to the redemptive and transformative power of God's love. That's incredible. You know, I know this is, is a big and broad topic, a big and broad idea that God is love. And honestly, my biggest fear 
as I, as I just throw this out there sim- simply that God loves you is that, that we're just going to take a, a simplistic view of this. Yeah, God is love. For God so loved the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I've heard about that. I know that. But here's what I want you to see. There's a difference in hearing that God is love and experiencing God's love. There's a difference in just hearing that God loves you as opposed to experiencing God's love for you. A big, huge difference. This is why 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 5 is so foundational to our faith. You know, the Apostle Paul, again, he loved to, to point people to the, to the love of God. And he says this to the church, may the, may the Lord bring you into an even deeper understanding of the love of God and the enduring faith that comes from Christ. My hope for you is that you would have an even deeper understanding, that you would be pursuing an even deeper understanding into the love of God. Because without a deeper understanding of the love of God and without really firsthand experience with the love of God and embracing the love of God, what you're going to do is you're going to probably fall into one of two categories. The first is you're either going to spend your whole life looking for love in all the wrong places where you just sort of bounce back and forth from one thing to another, looking to fill that void that only God can fill in your life. Or you're just going to live with an intellectual sort of understanding. Yeah, God loves me, but it really doesn't transform you. It doesn't shape your life. It, it It doesn't have any power in you. It's just an understanding. Yeah. God loves me, which leads to an apathetic faith. You know, this is why the Bible says this in Psalm 46.10. Be still and know that I am God. Man, God is, is encouraging you. Be still and know him. God doesn't want you to just know about him. He wants you to know him. I mean, seriously, to know him. He wants you to have an intimate friendship with him where you talk together, you do life together, you share common interests together, where you know each other's thoughts. I mean, that's the kind of intimate friendship that God wants to have with you. Do you know, do you know, do you know, do you know God like that? That's a huge question. Do you know God like that? Man, it took me, frankly, years in my faith journey to get to a place where I really understood what it meant to pursue the heart of God. And I just want to kind of give you a little bit of, of my journey in this, in this, in this pursuit of, of God's heart. You know, I grew up in a good home. I grew up in a great home. I had Christian parents. We went to church. You know, my parents talked about the Lord. We served together as a family. In fact, my mom used to make me memorize Bible verses. You know, she wanted God's word in, in my, my head, and hopefully it would make its way to my heart. But, but before I could run out to the bus, and I, there would often be days where the bus driver's honking, you know, waiting for me to get out. But my mom would not let me leave the house until I, I memorized or shared the Bible verse of the day. It was very important for her that I had God's word as my foundation. And she was incredibly intentional with that, and I'm grateful for that. So I knew about God, but I didn't know God. I didn't make that faith decision to know God. In fact, in fact, I had, I had deep spiritual apathy. In fact, for years I went to church, but that's really all that I did with my faith. And, and because of that, I grew further and further apart from the Lord. And by the time I was in mid-high school, man, my life was a train wreck. Man, I was leaving a trail of destruction everywhere I went. And finally, frustrated and fatigued with the way that I was doing life, I I decided to jump into our church youth group. And I went my my junior year of high school to a youth conference in Cincinnati, Ohio, where where God grabbed a hold of my life. In fact, today, still to this day, that's the only time I heard God speak to me audibly. And the Lord simply said this, Jason, I love you and I can change you. I love you and I can change you. Man, what a powerful, powerful thing. And so I accepted Jesus. 
Man, I invited Jesus to come into my life because I knew that I desperately needed change. But the reality is my faith still at that infant stage was still more of of an informationally based faith. I started to understand what it meant to be a Christian, but you know, I knew God and I and I wanted to love God and I knew God saved me, but I still didn't know God. You know, about a year went by and I went on my first mission experience. You know, I went to a homeless shelter in a city where I served for a weekend and absolutely had the greatest experience of my life. It was in that experience that I felt the call into ministry. I started to pursue ministry. I went to Bible college. I learned a lot. I grew a lot. I started doing ministry in the church and and teaching teenagers about, about Jesus. And I loved it. But I still, I still, you know, I was only a few years into my spiritual journey and I still didn't quite have that that heart to pursue the heart of God. But then I had an experience that changed everything. A time when I truly experienced the depth of God's love for real in, a, in, a, in, a, in kind of a crazy way. You know, in an unusual package called a baby. A baby. You know, having our first child. You know, that's when life got real in lots of different ways. But I remember my wife Amy, you know, going through a traumatic pregnancy and having a traumatic delivery. And it was just totally crazy. I mean, I was 24 years old. And, and then after things sort of in the, in the operating room, after the C-section settled down, after my son was born, the nurse said something to me that forever changed my life. She had this little baby in her hands and she said, you want to hold your son? You want to hold your son? And in that operating room, as I took hold of my little baby boy, it was as if God reached into my soul. And for the very first time, I, I, I realized This is love. Man, this is love. And God reminded me, he says, Jason, the love that you feel for your son times that by infinity. And that's the love that I have for you. Wow. Man, I can't, I I probably can't adequately explain to you with words, but if the doctor were to come in in that moment, I mean, it was that, it was that holy of a moment. And if, if the doctor would have come in in that moment and said, Jason, Hey, listen, we got a problem, you know, in, in order for, in order for your son to live, I need you to die. I think I would have died. I think I would have done it. I think I would have given my life. You know, 21 years later, I still think that I would give my life for any one of my three kids. A love that is willing to die. Think about this. A love that is willing to die for you. For you. Am I worth dying for? Are you worth dying for? That's a big, big question, isn't it? Have you ever thought about that one? But you know what God says? You are. You are. In fact, in 1 John 4, 9 and 10, this is how the Bible puts it. It says, this is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Paul, the Apostle Paul, says this in Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He goes on to say in verse 10 of that same chapter, for if when we were God's enemies, we were God's enemies because of our sin. For if when we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, shall we be saved through his life? The answer to that is, Yes. Not only this, not only is this so, he says, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we now have received reconciliation. This is the Father's heart, that you'd be reconciled back to him for eternity. That's love. Here's what's so cool about these verses. God's desire, God, it's God's desire to love you. 
The whole Bible is, is, is God's love pursuit of you. I mean, I could go through every single book of the Bible and talk about the various ways that God stepped in and showed up and spoke truth concerning his love. He loves you. I want you to know that today. But there's a second thing. Man, he loves, he loves you. And in doing so, he loves to comfort and protect us. I don't know about you, but this is how my mom is. I mean, not was, but is, even to this day, 46 years later. I mean, this is why every single week my mom will call me and she'll say, how can I be praying for you this week? I think that's code for, I want to know what's going on in your life, (laughs) right? I want to know what's going on in your life and, and in my grandkids' lives. But I know that she means it, and I know that she, she, this is her way of praying protection and praying over our family. It's incredible. You know, this idea of comfort and protection, it's very consistent. It's very consistent with how the Bible describes God. You know, this is what we see time and time again throughout scriptures. God's provision, God's protection, God's instruction, God's correction. His grace, His redemptive plan, it's all woven throughout the Bible. In fact, try to, try to wrap your mind around this from 1 Peter 5, 7. It says, let Him have all your worries and your cares. This is what I want you to get your mind around. For He is always thinking about you and watching everything that concerns you. Does that grip you like it grips me? I mean, come on. Our... our You are always on God's mind. God is always thinking about you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You are on God's mind. With all the craziness happening in our world, with everything that's going on around us, it's easy for us to feel insignificant, isn't it? But you are always on God's mind. That's how much he loves you. God is always thinking about you. Don't ever lose focus of that. And and, and another thing is is this. I love this scripture. Psalm 121 verse 5. God is described as being a protective shade. Listen to this. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord stands beside you as your protective shade. And when our kids were little, we would take them to the beach or we would take them to the lake. and, And my wife, just because she loved our kids, right? She would always do two things. We'd always have a big beach umbrella. Why? Because if the sun got too scorching, she'd pull the kids out of the sun and put them in the shade. Why? Because the shade is where you're refreshed. The shade is where you're, you know, you're, you're cooled off, right? From the, from the heat of the moment, from the heat of the sun. And the second thing she'd do, is she'd always put sunscreen on. Everywhere we went, she had sunscreen. Why? Because she was protecting them. Protecting them from the burn, from an irritation, from pain. And I love this image of God watching over us and leading us into the shade. Out of the burn and into the shade. How does he do that? Well, let me just walk you through this journey. He's given us a new way in Jesus. I mean, we sang about that, right? That God is our way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in dark times. He's working out all things for our good, the Bible says. Even when we don't see it, he's working. Even when we don't feel it, God is intricately involved in every part of our life because we are constantly on his mind. He is for us, the Bible says, not against us. He'll never leave us nor forsake us or reject us. God's grace is sufficient. He's given us his word to guide us, his spirit to comfort and correct us, his promise of his power in prayer. He's given us an inheritance that can never spoil or fade, kept in heaven just for you. Think about it this way, an eternal shade. And his invitation each and every day is this. Come to me, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest, Jesus said. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls in me. Do you remember? Do you remember when you were hurting as a kid? You know, man, you you went through something painful and you had a hurt. What did your mom used to say to you? She'd say, come here. 
Right. Mom, mom would say, come here, you know, kids are crying. Come here. And, and I love I used to love watching my wife do this with our kids. She'd pull our kids up on her lap and she would wrap her arms around our kids. And as if it was just to remind our kids that everything is going to be OK. Right. The lip would stop quivering. The tears would stop flowing because mom has 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 you. Right. You knew it was going to be OK. And this is what God is saying to you today. Come here. Come here. Let's do life together. Rest in me. Know that I'm, I'm your protective shade. Learn the ropes from me. And everything is going to be just all right. So what do we do with this? Right? So what? So we've learned some things about God from, from your mom, right? I mean, what does this mean for me today? Well, it means this. It means nothing if we don't respond to this love. It means nothing if we don't embrace the gifts that God has for us. And so I want to challenge you to respond in two ways to this today. The first is this. I want to ask you this. Have you received God's love? Man, if you want to live in God's love, you got to receive God's love. If you're someone who's been around church for a long time, it's easy to hear this and go, check, right? I mean, I've already done this. You know, this leads to a real apathy in our faith. Like, check, done this, nine years old, VBS, Sunday school, gave my life to Jesus. You know, but the question is, are you living in the power of God's love? Are you being refreshed every day by God's love? Are you pursuing the heart of God? I mean, listen to these words from John, John's gospel, John 1, verses 10 through 12. He says this, he says, he, speaking of Jesus, Jesus was in the world. And though the world was made through him, that's huge. The world did not recognize him. The creation didn't recognize the creator. It says he came to, to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet, to all who receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Do you see the significance of these verses? The Bible says that we're all created by God. Jesus came into the world he made. And the Bible reminds us that we're all a precious creation of God. But to those who receive him, there's a powerful shift that happens when we recognize Jesus as our Lord and as our example, and we receive his love. There's a shift that takes place. We move from simply being a creation of God to now being a child of God. And here's what happens as a child of God. You have access to the gifts of God because you're his child. You, 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 have the, you, know, you have access to the power of God, to the promises of God, to the presence of God, to the purposes of God. And with that comes the goodness of God that shapes and changes who we are and how we live. And over time, as we press into God's love more and more and have a deeper understanding of this love, what we see happen is all that is true of Jesus becomes all that is true of us by the power of the Holy Spirit. We don't just take on the family name, but we take on the nature of the family and the fruit that's being developed in us by, by, by the power of the Holy Spirit is the fruit of love and joy and peace and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And you go, how do I get that? You give Jesus your yes. You just say, yes, I know you love me and I receive that love. And now I'm going to pursue the heart of the Father. Man, that's how you, that's how that becomes more and more alive. And you, have you given God your yes? It's an important question because when you do, here's what happens. The second thing, you reflect God's love. You receive God's love and then you reflect God's love. Now, now that you've received God's love, now you have the ability to love others well. This is what Paul says happens in Ephesians 3 when, when we grasp and are able to grasp how wide and long and high and deep the love of God is. What happens is this love fills in our lives to overflowing from our lives. Moms, do you want to love your families? Then love Jesus more and more. Dads, do you want to love your wives and your kids? Then love Jesus more and more. Kids, do you want to love you, your, your families and your friends? Then love Jesus more and more. And let me encourage you with this as we close. Ephesians 5, verses 1 and 2. 
The Bible says, be in imitators of God, therefore, as dearly loved children, and live a life of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and a sacrifice to God. Receive his love. Reflect his love. Let me pray for you. Father, I want to thank you for our time today. I want to thank you for the truth that you are love. I want to thank you for the truth that you love us. God, may we, may we grow and long for a deeper understanding of that love. May we pursue the Father's heart and the Father's heart daily. May we press into you and may we see the promises of God coming more and more alive in us so that we can there, therefore go out and reflect that love to the people in our lives. Jesus, thank you so much for all that you do and for all that you are. And maybe you're here and you're listening to this today and you're watching this today and you've yet to give your life to Jesus. What are you waiting for? Man, Jesus is, is here today and he says, I love you. And he wants a relationship with you. And if you're ready to put your full trust in him today, I'm going to lead you through a prayer. And if you would just give your heart to him, man, he will take that and he will mend it and he will, he will make you just right and just new again. But you first have to receive him. And so if you're ready to do that, you're ready to place your faith and your trust and seek his forgiveness and grace, why don't you just pray this with me right where you're at? Just tell him this. Say, Jesus, thank you for loving me. I get it. God, thank you for sending your son to die on the cross for my sins. I ask you, Jesus, to come into my life today. I ask you to forgive my sins. I receive your love. And God, now may I, as I press into this love, may I be able to reflect this love from my life as I know you more and more each day. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you just prayed to receive Christ, I just want you to know the greatest thing just happened. You know, all heaven is rejoicing. We're rejoicing with you, man, as, as you just are made just right again with the Father. And so it, we would love to know that you made this decision to follow Jesus today. In fact, there's a number that's going to come at the bottom of your screen. And if today is a day that you, you have given your life to Jesus, would you just text believe? Just text the word believe to that number that's at the bottom of your screen, because we'd love to know you. We'd love to come alongside you and help you in your faith journey. This is not the end of anything. This is the beginning of something awesome. So let us know that. Also, if you're, you're here today, and today's a tough day, and you need prayer, we'd love to come alongside you too. And to that same number that's at the bottom of your screen, why don't you just text pray? And one of us, a pastor from our, our staff, will, will be happy to call you and contact you right now and pray with you and, uh, and encourage you in any way that we can. Guys, thank you for tuning in today. Moms, happy Mother's Day. Hope you have a great day. Know that we love you. We're praying for you. We're cheering for you. And we're excited for what God's doing in your life. Have a great day. We'll see you next week.